This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Friday, the 18th day of February in the year 2022. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here's what we're tracking tonight. A number of Mashramani events that are open to the public will be held this weekend, but the Ministry of Health is reminding the nation that the COVID-19 pandemic is still not over. This weekend, the Ministry of Culture hosts a number of events, including the Calypso, Chutney and Soko competitions, and the Steel Pan competition also. There are also a number of private Mashramani events being planned for the weekend and into next week. Only a limited number of vaccinated persons will be allowed to attend the events. But the health minister said even with a declining number of positive cases, persons should still not be complacent and should take all of the precautions if they decide to attend the public events. What we have is we have seen an Omicron wave and those numbers have been dropping, but we still have cases. And um, if we are not careful, uh, those cases can still spike. Last Friday, the government announced the removal of the national curfew from the COVID-19 regulations. However, the health minister reminded that while the curfew has been lifted, the other COVID-19 regulations remain in place. He said the organizers of the various events for Mashramani need to seek guidance from the National COVID-19 Task Force. Well, I'm not sure what Mashramani activities would be hosted. Uh, while we have lifted the curfew, all the other measures are still in place. And I do hope that any person who is promoting activities or involved in these types of entertainment arrangements, that they would first seek guidance from the task force before proceeding to organize any such um, gathering. The government is expected to keep the COVID-19 regulations in place to fight off a possible spike in new cases. The health minister said Guyana has to be cautious about reopening the country fully. So once we start opening up like this, and if we open up too soon, we are going to see spikes in cases. And therefore, we cannot be complacent. We have to be mindful that we are still in a COVID-19 pandemic. And therefore, we have to make sure that we take the necessary precautions, especially those that are going to protect us. And we have to also bear in mind that in some of the societies that are opening up, that they have higher vaccination rates than we have. In the past 24 hours, the country recorded 48 new COVID-19 cases. It is one of the lowest numbers of new cases recorded in several weeks. However, the Ministry of Health also reported that five more persons, most of them unvaccinated, have succumbed to the virus. More news coming up in just a moment. How fast is fiber? Think fast. GTT Fiber has three packages with download speeds of 50, 100, and 150 megabits per second. That's fast enough to stream movies and music, to chat with Gran and Fran, to study, and more. What would you do? Upgrade to GTT Fiber today and don't get left behind tomorrow. Shop on Fizero today and get up to 35% off. We have thousands of new items in stock, from TVs to smartphones, from blenders to entire outfits. You can find practically anything on Fizero.com. With online payments and same-day delivery, it's convenience like never before. Fizero, Guyana's premier e-commerce marketplace. Miss Smash Queen Guyana 2022 National Pride Costume Competition and Coronation Sunday, February 20th at 1900 hours at the Ramada Georgetown Princess Hotel. Come, witness our six ambassadors vie for the crown as we mash down, mask up, and make melody. People may forget the present you bought for them, but they'll never forget your scent. Find your signature fragrance at Elite Fragrances and Trade In. Located at 123 Region Road Borda between Ornock Street and Shiv Shandapal Drive. Call 619 5151 or 227 1255. Get a designer fragrance for yourself or loved one that they will never forget. It's here. Introducing the MyGPL Customer Portal, a convenient way to access all your account information in one location. 
To sign up, it's easy. Simply go to https colon two forward slash my dot gplinc dot com. After signing up, you will receive a confirmation email. Once logged in, view your postpaid account, monitor your consumption, view current charges and payment history, retrieve current and previous bills, and submit meter readings. My GPL Customer Portal. Access to all your account information from your PC, tablet, or mobile phone at your convenience. Sign up today. For more information, contact our customer call center on 226 2600. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. We've got exciting news! All 12 ounce yellow cap Buster are now only $100. Buster, live in the Come get color. your Buster, Buster 100. A Chinese national who was arrested earlier this week by the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit following a drug bust is expected to appear in court on Monday to face the drug trafficking charges. He was expected to appear in court before the chief magistrate today, but there was no Chinese interpreter available at the time at the court today, so the hearing had to be postponed. The suspect was held earlier this week after Kanu intercepted a quantity of cocaine at the post office in a package that was destined for China. The cocaine was found in multiple small packages within a large box and weighed more than 15 pounds. Kanu sources said the cocaine was contained in juice boxes and biscuit packages. The accused reportedly lives in the Bel Air area. Prime Minister of Barbados Mia Motley on her return home from Guyana late yesterday announced that Guyana is set to join the regional security system in the Eastern Caribbean bloc which was created in 1982 to counter threats to the stability of the region and for the defense and security of the region. The Prime Minister was at the time updating Barbadians on her four-day visit to Guyana. That is a significant impetus um, for us in the Southern Caribbean. Guyana's military is long established and is well equipped and therefore the ability to have another anchor in the regional security system. The ability to have another anchor within the regional security system is something that will enhance the ability of the RSS not only to respond to national security issues but in particular as we get ready to go into the hurricane season. The Prime Minister also raised the issue of the training of Guyanese hospitality workers by Barbados and the training of Barbadians by Guyana in the area of skills development. Prime Minister Motley also announced that manufacturers from Guyana will be heading to Barbados in April for meetings and business linkages. Similarly, we were able to have discussions with their manufacturers and in fact I'm happy to report that there will be a group of Guyanese manufacturers coming here early in April. Um, and looking at a range of products, including prefab housing. We looked at the whole issue of access to timber. We looked at the issue of, um, and have been discussing um, seriously, the question of combined training. There are some areas in which Ghana's training um, will be what we need in the area of welding and joinery, etc. And there are other areas in hospitality where we can provide significant opportunities. They want 6,000 hospitality workers trained and we have already started the process of providing for that. With respect to tourism, Prime Minister Motley said there are opportunities for co-branding, particularly in Europe, as well as international transport and logistics for the movement of cargo. In addition to that, we discussed the question of how do we get the whole issue of reducing the cost of air travel between our countries, because once people start moving, they're going to find the opportunities that governments haven't even thought about. And I believe that that, therefore, is also going to be one of the things you'll see significant progress on over the course of the next few weeks. The countries also discussed the question of food prices and how they can work together to have those questions addressed. And during her four-day visit, the Prime Minister of Barbados held several meetings with government and private sector officials and also visited the Rupununi region and Kaichur Falls. 
As Ghana continues to make its mark in the oil and gas industry globally, climate change still remains an important responsibility. According to the business development manager at Becknell Downstream, Jeff Minoski, Ghana sits in a position to correct some wrongs and become a leader in renewable energy while still exploring. Mr. Minoski, who spoke at the International Energy Conference on the topic of chemicals and energy transition business line, said that while many countries around the world have failed to make that balance, Ghana as an emerging oil giant sits in the right position to strike that balance while sustaining economic growth. Namely, your desire to develop the oil and gas sector in order to set up the country for a prosperous economic future and also your commitments to being a low carbon nation. And I want to echo some of the sentiments that have already been shared by others in saying that developing oil and gas projects and remaining committed to being a low carbon nation and meeting those commitments is absolutely possible and it's necessary. As the Prime Minister of Barbados said on day one, net zero does not mean zero fossil fuels. According to Mr. Minoski, it remains absolutely possible to have a developed oil and gas sector and still uphold the commitment of low carbon emissions. Ghana currently has a low carbon development strategy with focuses on renewable forms of energy. Minoski explained that Ghana must carefully study the oil and gas sector while also playing its part in climate change. I just want to summarize by saying that there really is no one size fits all approach to achieving decarbonization targets. Goals can be met by implementing a range of design, technology, and construction and operation solutions. Being able to accurately determine overall cost and benefit impacts when planning a project or a complex project design uh, is key to executing a successful decarbonization program. Identifying optimum decarbonization measures requires knowledge of technical advances, technological advances, the development of an action plan, the ability to build sustainably, delivering carbon-reducing assets integrated with policy and regulation landscape. The official said some projects should focus on the no-waste trajectory, which would ensure recycling. The International Energy Conference wrapped up yesterday at the Marriott Hotel, bringing an end to four days of intense sessions on the oil and gas sector and energy. In wake of the announcement by the government of the sale of the Gaisuko packaging facility at Enmore to a joint venture group for the construction of a fabrication facility, the Gan Agricultural and General Workers Union, Gawu, is seeking an urgent meeting with Gaisuko on the issue. In a statement today, Gawu said it dispatched a letter to the sugar company raising several issues about the decision, including issues related to the future of the more than 30 workers employed at a sugar packaging plant. The union said it has seen media reports on the issue, but it wants to know of all the arrangements that will be put in place and the next steps for the workers who are likely to be affected. Gawu said it was informed by Guy Suko that the corporation will engage the union in respect to the impending changes. Earlier this week, Geisons Engineering and KB Industries of the U.S. announced their joint venture move, which will see $7 billion being pumped into the construction and establishment of a fabrication facility at the Gaisuko Enmore Estate on more than 50 acres of land bought from Gaisuko through the government. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Shop on Fizero today and get up to 35% off. We have thousands of new items in stock, from TVs to smartphones, from blenders to entire outfits. You can find practically anything on Fizero.com. With online payments and same-day delivery, it's convenience like never before. Fizero, Guyana's premier e-commerce marketplace. Miss Smash Queen Guyana 2022 National Pride Costume Competition and Coronation Sunday, February 20th at 1900 hours at the Ramada Georgetown Princess Hotel. Come, witness our six ambassadors vie for the crown as we mash down, mask up, and make melody. We've got exciting news! All 12 ounce yellow cap Buster are now only $100. Buster, live in Come get color. your pasta, pasta 100 dollar, dollar Come get your pasta, pasta 100 dollar, dollar Fuel it up and drive, super, 95, tune up Fuel it up and drive, super, 95, tune up Protect your fuel system, boy High mileage and performance, boy Guy 
Ford Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 gasoline. Across the region tonight, in Trinidad, judicial officers can now consider granting bail to persons charged with murder. Delivering a written judgment during a virtual hearing earlier yesterday, Chief Justice Iper Arch and appellate judges Amira Den Amour and Malcolm Holdip ruled that Section 5.1 of the Bail Act of 1994, which precludes the grant of bail for persons accused of murder, is inconsistent with the Constitution of Trinidad and should be struck down. The appeal panel also ruled that segment of the legislation was not reasonably justifiable in a society that is concerned about the rights of citizens and that it interfered with a core judicial function. It also noted the Constitutional Savings Clause, which insulates pre-Republican legislation from review by a court, did not apply as there was no general prohibition to grant bail to persons charged with murder in 1976. The Dominican Republic has ended all COVID-19 public health restrictions, including a mask mandate and vaccine checks in public spaces, despite not yet reaching the government's vaccination target of 70% coverage for adults. The president made the announcement on social media and in a televised message on Wednesday. The Caribbean nation, which shares the island of Hispaniola with Haiti, started relaxing COVID-19 containment measures last July, when authorities ended a nighttime curfew that had been in effect since March of 2020. Prior to the latest announcement, the government had required face coverings in public places and proof of vaccination before riding public transportation or showing up at local businesses to work or shop. The health minister told reporters on Thursday that ending the containment measures was due to constant reductions in both COVID-19 infections and the death rate. Officials have registered more than 4,300 fatalities due to COVID-19, and while only eight of the country's 32 provinces have reached the 70% vaccination target, new infections have dipped by about 10% over the past four weeks, according to the health ministry in the Dominican Republic. And finally tonight, international news. Thousands of Porsche and Volkswagen cars have been abandoned on a cargo ship after it caught fire in the Atlantic Ocean en route to the U.S. The ship named Felicity Ace was traveling from Germany before it caught the blaze off the coast of Portugal's Azores Islands. A German newspaper reported that the vessel was carrying 3,965 vehicles, which also included Audis, Lamborghinis, and a small number of Bentleys. The ship's crew members were all rescued. Portugal's Navy said no one was hurt by the fire which broke out on Wednesday, and the 22 crew members were taken to a hotel after the Navy for merchant ships sailing in the area and the Portuguese Air Force completed the evacuation. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight and this week. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting and encouraging you to stay safe. <laughs>